Good luck, Penny. Here you go. What title was used by Wilhelm II, who was German Emperor from 1888 to 1918? Klaus, Kaiser or Kiefer? Well, I believe that would be Kaiser. Kaiser Bill. It's the right answer. Yes, well done. Barry, where was the ancient Sumerian civilization based? Africa, Europe or Asia? It was based in Asia, mostly in southern Iraq. OK, more specific for us than we needed. <laughs> but the right answer. Well done, Barry. One all. Penny, what was the real first name of the English dandy known as Beau Brummel? Henry, Edward or George? We've had this in quizzes several times, and I must confess, I can't remember the answer, but I'm going to go for George. George, you think you've recalled. I hope so. You have done. It's the right answer. George Brummel. And a second question for you, Barry. By 1890, the British-born South African statesman Cecil Rhodes, who, through his British South Africa company, developed Rhodesia, owned 90% of the world's production of what? Gold, diamonds or platinum? He started out with very little, but he ended up owning most of the diamonds in the world. 90% of the world's diamonds? He certainly did, is the right answer, Barry. Two to you, then, and third question apiece. Penny, the Evian Accords of 1962, signed on the French shore of Lake Geneva, brought to a close which conflict? The First Indochina War, the Algerian War, or the Franco-Syrian War? Um, I'm not altogether sure about this, but I'm going to go for the Algerian War. Algerian War. Do the dates fit, Eggheads? 1962? Yep. Yeah, 62, that ended. It's the right answer. Oh. Yes, 1962. The Algerian War concluded there with that uh, peace treaty or Evian Accord. So, Barry, you've got to get this. The so-called Intolerable Acts of 1774 were a series of measures by Britain that aimed to reimpose strict control on colonies in which part of the world? America, Australia or India? They were the acts that uh, caused the American colonists to finally decide that they'd had enough of us and, and uh, for, start fomenting the idea of breaking away from us. So the answer is America. How wrong they were. Yes, they should have stayed part of the UK. They'd have been much better off. <laughs> uh, America is the right answer. The intolerable acts of 1774. It's three all. It means penny. We go to sudden death, which means those multiple choices disappear from your screen. Just got to hear an answer from you. Penny, what was the profession of the French revolutionary Joseph Ignace Guillotin, or guillotine if you like, who suggested the use of the capital punishment device that bears his name? I haven't the foggiest notion, so I'm going to have a little think, try to come up with an educated guess, which is um, a maker of swords. OK, sword maker. Yeah. Yeah, with the blade and uh, the rest of it in the guillotine. But not the right answer. Not a sword maker. Do you know Barry? Uh, Penny could have put you in first. This yes. could have been your question. I believe he was a doctor who was looking for a painless method of execution. Yeah. He, he used a device that was already present called Louis Yep, but for some reason his name seemed to stick to it. I see. So it was already invented. They were already. Were oh, we? yes. The, the Scots were using a version of that for at least 100 years before. Have I got it wrong then? I thought, I thought he then in, invented the, the angle on the blade, which made horrible to talk about. They made the slicing of the neck cleaner. No, I think... straight I... blade before? No? That's plausible, Dermot, yeah. I think he, he did... Yeah. He produced some refinements to... There were a number of instruments that were already existing. But they just had a straight blade that yeah. then came down rather yeah. inelegantly I mean, he, he and crushed the neck. Yeah, he improved it, so it's fair enough, really, to say that he invented it in that sense. I mean, in, until they abolished capital punishment in France, yeah. they, they used the guillotine right um, up until... 1977. 1977. 1977. I that... mean, it was almost yesterday, you know. Mm, that was the last execution, wasn't yeah. it, in, in France? Okay, well, there we have it. Uh, doctor or physician or surgeon uh, Joseph Guillotine. So we didn't hear that from Penny. It gives Barry a chance to take the round. Barry, in 1768, which organisation sent James Cook to the Pacific to observe the transit of Venus across the sun? That would be the Royal Society. Seem very confident about that, Barry? Yes, I'm reasonably sure that's the right answer. Well, I'll just confirm that is the right answer, the Royal Society. You're through to the final round, Barry. I'm sorry, Penny, you won't be playing in the final round. Would you both please come back and join your teams?
Well, well played, Penny. Just not enough to see Barry off there. It means, uh, as it stands, the Crown Robins have lost one brain from the final round. The Eggheads haven't lost any yet, and we play our second subject today. This one's science. Who'd like to play science? Got to be Sue, hasn't it? Got to be Sue. A former science teacher. Ah, former science teacher, are you, Sue? Okay, then it has to be you then. <laughs> now, who would you like to play from the Eggheads? It can't be Barry, but uh, any of the other four are available. Judith. 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 Yeah, I'd like yes. to play Judith, please. Okay, Judith, let's have our former science teacher, Sue, and millionaire winner, Judith, into the question room, please. Would you like to go first or second, Sue? Um, I'd like to go second, please. That means it's you, Judith, to start, and this is your question, in mathematics, what is 3 cubed, 9, 18 or 27? Um, 3, 3 is a 9, 3 9s are 27. <laughs> yep, I'm sure Sue will give you a tick for that. <laughs> Thanks <laughs> yes. for sharing the workings out as well. Always, always Gold star, for Judith. That. Yes. So, Sue, first question to you, what type of animal is a sharpe? A goat, a horse, or a dog? Oh dear, I really can't make my mind up. Um, I'm veering towards dog, because I really don't know the answer. Um, I'll settle on dog. Dog? Yes. OK. Hey, kids. It's one of those very, very wrinkly dogs with enormous amount of folds. Oh, yes. Mm. Yeah. I think I know what you're talking about. Yes. Sharp hey, as a dog. We'll confirm that for you, Sue. Well done, one all. Judith, your next question. A single hydrogen atom contains one electron, no neutrons, and how many protons? None, one, or two. I thought that electrons and protons had to be the same. Or maybe not. Oh, I'm going to try and hope that I remember correctly and say one. It's the right answer, yes. Well retained, Judith. Um, Sue, what is the term for the measure of the purity of a precious metal as part of an alloy? Is it fineness, veracity, or permanence? Oh, I don't think it's veracity. That must be something to do with truth. Um, I'll go for fineness. Fineness? Yes. The uh, purity of a precious metal as part of an alloy is fineness. Very fine answer. Two each. Judith, in the human kidneys, what is the name of the tubular units that filter waste from the blood? Are they leptons, nephrons, or tachyons? Well, I think it's probably nephrons, because if you get nephritis, I think is um, something to do with inflammation of the kidneys. Um, I, so I'm going to say nephrons. It's right. Well done, Judith. Three to you. OK, Sue, you must get this one to take us into sudden death, then. Approximately how many miles high is Olympus Mons, the volcano found on Mars? Is it 17 miles, 27 miles, or 37 miles? Oh dear, astronomy I know very little about. Um, I'll have to plump for the middle one and say 27 miles. 27 miles, whatever it is, it's uh, very high indeed. Olympus Mons, found on Mars, is... 17 miles, wow. approximately 17 miles high, which means, Judith, you've taken the round. You will be playing there in the final round, and Sue, you won't be playing for the money today. Would you both come back and join your teams? Well, uh, as it stands, the Crown Robins have lost two brains from the final round. The eggheads haven't lost any. Got two more chances to knock an egghead out, Crown Robins. Your next one is on the subject of music. If you'd like to play this, and it's a no. Bob Carroll or Frank. Help me to do it. I think, I think, I think, I think you Bob, have to yeah. do it. Yes, yeah, Bob. you need to do it, Bob. I'll do it, yeah. Dermot. Okay, Bob. Good luck to you, and your challenger will be CJ. Oh. Kevin oh, or Chris? Chris? Chris is a bit good, isn't he? Gilbert, Gilbert and Sullivan and things. Yeah, yeah. Probably Gilbert Sullivan. Mm -hmm. uh, you never know. Uh, well, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, Go on then, Chris. <laughs> oh, you nearly put him off for that knowledge Gilbert, of Gilbert and Sullivan. Sullivan. <laughs> <laughs> well, it might be there, who knows. Let's have Bob and Chris into the question room, please. OK, then. Uh, Bob, uh, would you like to go first or second in this music round? Uh, I'll go first, please, Dermot. OK, going first this time, the challenger. Uh, good luck to you, Bob. Here's your question. Which pop star celebrated her 50th birthday in August 2008? Madonna, Janet Jackson or Kylie Minogue? Well, if, I'm, if I've got the right one, there's been a lot of hype about it, uh, and I think it's Madonna. 
Um, yeah, I don't think Kylie liked me on that list, actually. <laughs> um, it is Madonna, yes, 50. Uh, correct, August 2008. Apologies, Kylie, if you're watching. Chris, what was the title of the Beatles' April 1965 UK number one hit single? Ticket to Park, Ticket to Ride, or Ticket to Tow Away? She's got a ticket to ride and she don't care. Ticket to Ride. Ticket to Tow Away kind of sounds better now, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, ticket to Ride, yes, that's correct. Back to you, Bob. When conducting an orchestra, the first beat of each bar is normally indicated by the conductor moving his or her baton in which direction? Upwards, downwards, or forwards? Downwards. I was surprised you weren't waving your hands around yeah. in there, Bob. Just to... <laughs> I'm sat on them. <laughs> it is downwards. Well worked out. Yes, first beat of each bar, signified by downward movement of the conductor's baton. Okay, Chris, The Last Shadow Puppets is a side project of Miles Kane and which other lead singer? Alex Turner, Ricky Wilson or Gary Barlow? Never heard of The Last Shadow Puppets, never heard of Miles Kane, never heard of any of those three. Yes, I have. I've heard of Gary Barlow. Yeah, okay, um, right. <laughs> uh, bu, 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 bu. Oh, who cares? Alex Turner. Is the right answer, yes. <laughs> well, you know, it's a one in three shot. Uh, very good. Uh, last Shadow Puppets, uh, Miles Kane and Alex Turner, completely guessed at by Chris, but he got it. Bob, the ARIA charts, A-R-I-A, -A, the ARIA charts, are the main music sales charts in which country? Australia, South Africa or Ireland? ARIA. Hmm. Well, as you can gather, I don't really know. <laughs> I've got to try and work this one out. I think... I would have to go, in this case, for South Africa. OK, South Africa, the main music sales charts. <coughs> you think the ARIA charts are in you in Australia? Australia, presumably initials, I guess. Do you know? Recording Industry Association. Or... Probably Australian Recording Industry Association, something like that. Um, but there we are, uh, not South <laughs> Africa. Chris, then, um, how have we reached this point? You might win the round <laughs> if you get this. Which classical composer's Piano Concerto No. 2 from 1901 became famous when it was used in the 1945 film Brief Encounter? Was it Rachmaninoff, Borodin or Rinsky korsakov That is Sergei Rachmaninoff. You're presumably a fan of Brief Encounter with all that uh, train action going on. Well, I knew Carl Futh in the old days, so yeah, I suppose I am. Is that where it's, um, is that the, well, where the station the, scenes take place? Well, most of the main exteriors are on, uh, shot at Carl Futh, yeah. It is Rachmaninoff. It's the correct answer. Chris, you're through to the final round. After a wild stab in the dark there with Alex Turner, it's uh, carried you through. It means bad luck for you, Bob. You won't be playing in the final round. Would you both please come back and join your teams?